been very interesting to see some people become quite anxious and try and tiptoe around it, that they're clearly uncomfortable and I guess I want to bring up the elephant in the room almost and sort of say it's okay, I'm fine, I'm a normal person who has just had suffered from a, from a mental health problem. I was probably in a little bit of a shock for the first couple of months that I spent it at Geelong and took a while to, uh, to get used to not only the place but just me uh, being, being a part of a great football club. My first experience with mental illness was at the start of my third season at Geelong. I was coming off a really good pre-season and was looking forward to staking my claim as a permanent player in, in Geelong's best 22 and all of a sudden I was absolutely hating life and getting out of bed and hating spending time with my friends and the things I normally enjoyed became a chore. Playing footy became an, an absolutely massive difficulty for me and even sort of turning up to training was really difficult, mostly out of embarrassment and um, me not knowing what was going on. I got diagnosed with uh, major depressive disorder, which was a bit of a shock. And I guess growing up in the, in the country and being at a school where it wasn't really, mental health wasn't really talked about. And then also, I guess, having what I thought and still think because it was an amazing life, playing AFL and had a great life in Geelong and plenty of friends. It was a real shock to sort of hear that. That all led me to actually needing to step back from, from footy a little bit. I was stuck in my own thoughts and was just so frustrated that this had happened to me and, and felt really lost and I guess like I couldn't see the end of the tunnel, I couldn't see a way of getting out of this wreck that I was in. I remember one day in particular when Dad was home and I remember sitting in my room on the floor for about two hours with this bottle of sleeping tablets and sort of holding them to my mouth a few times and not wanting my life to end but wanting to end this pain and not knowing how to do it. Thankfully Dad came down and sort of broke the spell and that was really another turning point to realise how, how serious um, this illness had, had got for me. And I guess the manliness and the macho culture associated with footy clubs was a big part of why I tried to hide what I was going through and thought I couldn't show any weakness. The most surprising thing was once I did open up, the incredible support I got from everyone, from the, the blokiest of blokes and the people you wouldn't expect it. Everyone was so supportive and wanted to help me in any way they can. Even though I've been well for quite a while now, I still see a psychologist every three weeks, which just helps me to keep on top of things. I also sort of just have made quite a few lifestyle adjustments. The biggest one being retiring from footy at the end of 2012, which was a really tough decision. I, I really loved footy and, and loved the footy club and, and still do. It wasn't the right balance for me and I needed to sort of have a bit more of other things going on in my life. So I've sort of got study and work and can now still play footy on the weekends and. I guess I'm, I'm back enjoying footy like I used to as a kid. Whatever the, the future holds, I'll have this experience with me and we'll be able to sort of make decisions that will help keep me happy and, and well. And I think for me, that's, that's gonna be the most important thing.